Okay. Thank you guys. Thank you for being here and to being like part of this kind of journey on helping new communities to get together and to close the gap on like get right up onto the mic. What? Right up onto the mic. Yeah. More right. thanks, man. I told you I'm really bad at these microphone things. But uh, thank you for being here. My name is Alvaro, Alvaro Soto. I was born in Chile, but I'm been, I've been based in Mexico since like 20 years. And because I was born in Chile and living in Mexico, I believe that I've been trying to help all the countries in the middle. <laughs> that is mainly the entire Latin region. So what I want to do today, and after doing that, I would like to say this, this is like my own opinion, this is my personal idea, this is, I don't, I don't have a secret recipe to fix the things that I'm going to sh talk today, this is just an issue that I'm being seeing like year by year with the pass of new technologies and everything. I don't, I, don't, I don't know a way to fix it, but I, I believe that is, even if I don't know a way to fix it, it will be a good idea to present this, this like, issues that I'm seeing that is like working against these awesome technologies that we all love and enjoy. So um, like I said, this is my personal opinion. I work for Red Hat, but this is not the opinion of Red Hat or the communities. This is a personal one. So if I say something wrong, please don't take it off them. Okay, uh, a few things. I'm gonna talk a, bit, a little bit about me. Uh, opinions, outcome, real issue. I'm going to talk on two specific real issues. Uh, why this thing is happening and a little bit of like call for help. Let's just work as a community to try to help these issues and to try to like embrace more and more technologies, right? Okay, like I said, first, I was born in Chile, but a little tiny, tiny city south of Chile. And because I'm, like I said, part of the both cities and try to help any country in the middle. I've been working with communities in Guatemala, Colombia, Bolivia, and doing workshops. Uh, not part of my company, just for my own fun and because I believe in the technology that we, that, why is the main reason that we are, are here right now? Okay, I, like I said, I work for Red Hat. I provide like support on OpenShift for telcos, mainly like 5G core telcos. Um, like I said, just a blame it approach. This is, I'm not trying to point fingers on anyone, uh, just throwing ideas and, I was gonna say after this slide, let's just get serious, but uh, I forget about it. But uh, okay, blame its approach. Everything that I'm going to say right now is just an idea, things that I'm seeing in the, in the region. Um, let's get starting. Okay, when, when we have like on companies in Latin, they, they want to choose how to fix an issue using technology, they will see and this is not like something weird, like just two way to fix the issue, right? Using open source or using proprietary software. And we are all here because we want for companies to use open source and to help them to, to achieve that. So what ended up happening, and it's a really like weird thing to happen normally in, in Latin America, is that companies, they, they, they don't care about paying more because they want to go for the safe bet. They don't care about paying licenses, subscription, whatever, like certification for the team. They don't, they don't care about it. They, it's not that there is a bunch of like countries that have millions to spend on this, but for them it's the only and the important idea that they have in mind. They don't care about paying because they see this as the only option, okay? So they feel really comfortable by 
going for the kind of black box solution, the well known. There is sometimes no way to get that, at that point to, to say, hey, this is a black box and a well known solution because it is a black box. You, you, you don't know what is happening inside. Maybe you have an, a, a GIS of, ah, this is maybe running Linux, doing this and this and this, but you don't know how, to, how everything is working in the inside, so that is like hard to, hard to tell, hard to understand. But it is the safe bet because it is easier to get people that are certified on these technologies. It's, it is easier to get, and at this, at this point, I don't care about saying company names, like get people certified on NetApp, ENC, VMware, AWS, whatever. They don't care about that because they can pay for the certification, they are paying for the support, they are paying to these companies to get the support, and if something happens, it's kind of a relief that they raise a case, and even when nothing is happening inside that company trying to fix your issue because there is not step one, there is not a priority, on the other side, you can turn around and say to, the, to your manager, everything is fine, I already raised a case, they are working on it. So for them, it's like a relief to say that. But um, that is something that I believe it can be fixed, doing something really like easy, is to put in the customer shoes. Like, what do you need to do? Why do you need this? And I know that maybe a lot of use cases in Latin America, they are a little bit weird, a little bit like that. They, they, they are like edge cases when they ask too much and they try to compare like, it's not that they want to fix something, they want that, they want a technology and for them to explain you what they want, they will give you the answer that, yeah, uh, I, I need something that works like Bingware. I need something that works like NetApp. I need something that works like Oracle, like Oracle, something like that. Because that is the safe bet. And if they're gonna change it, they want to have the same. So, a way to kinda try to fix or understand a little bit better the, the use case is to sit with the customer and try to explain them how to achieve the main goal, because the main goal is not to replace one technology with another. That, I, I hardly believe that that will be the, the end goal for any, com, any customer. That is just an answer that they are going to give you because they don't maybe know <laughs> where do they want to go, and that is fine, that is per perfectly fine that if they don't know where they want to go, Maybe they, they know what to want to fix in the next year, on the next six months, but I believe it's on us to say, okay, you can use this, this will get you the way that, or to the point that you need in the six months, and then you can continue and think on another cycle of what do you need in the next month and the next year, and for that it will be, if you want to achieve the next goal, you don't have to start from scratch, because you are already, maybe no, you are not sharing with me your end goal because you don't know it, but I can try to like help you to, to have a, like a, an easy way to get when we might think that everyone wants to go. So that is a, I put it as a question mark, like fix, because it's the way that I believe this is uh, again, this is not a recipe. I believe that, that that could be accomplished by doing that. And this is something really important for me because I believe in the, uh, at the beginning when we are starting listening about open source, the, the easiest way to explain someone what is open source, we start using words as it's free as a beer. And it's like, okay, open source is not free. The knowledge is not free. You have to invest time and energy and sleep sleepless night to continue working with this, with open source, reading 
documentation, hitting the correct people on IRC, Slack, whatever, communities, work with communities, because that is like, that for me it's like open source is a desire of accomplish something and it's really hard to translate that. So I believe when people talking, like when they are native on different languages, they're trying to explain what is open source, what is the meaning of it, and at some point it gets lost in translation. They, it's really hard to, even if we are talking in English, to explain someone that English is not their primary language, because they are, at some way, when we speak more than two languages, we, like teachers and everyone said, oh, don't translate, that. make it normal, make it, make it happen normal in the background, but our mind is doing this kind of translation, like regardless. So we are trying to translate everything that someone is explaining to us about what is open source, but if you are start using words as free, um, that you are not gonna spend anything, that you are gonna get 100% of like the cost that you are like getting on selling this technology, whatever, that is not true. Like you have hardware, you have people, you need to buy books, you need to read a lot, you need to contact people, you need a lot of things. So I do believe that we should stop saying that open source is free because it's really in the other way. It's pointing in the other direction. Like maybe for a person that is learning, it's okay. He, he will be really interested in learning things. But for people that we may have been working like for five, 10 years, I will say that learning open source is not free. <laughs> like, like we all have a scars from learning open, open source, so it's, it's really different. Then, getting back to this one. Okay, two options while, looping, while using open source, right? We still have another choice to make. The first one, create and use an internal team to get support, right? We don't, pay, we don't want to pay to anyone, we just want to have and build and develop our own team. Cool. You can go the other way around, pay for support. There are many companies in here that will provide that for you, but we still have to have people in the inside to make the smart questions to the companies providing support. So we still have to develop a little bit of like knowledge in the inside, maybe not at the same amount or deepest in knowledge, but we still have to have people to get, like to ask the, the smart questions. Normally a bunch of people said, oh, okay, I want to use open source. Yeah, what is this? Kubernetes, damn. I need to get a master's degree, a PhD, to understand how this thing works, because I'll, the documentation is never going to be 100% out there. Most of the time you are going to have to start documenting yourself from, the, from, from GitHub. It's like not the best way, but it's the way it is. So a lot of people think on this, but this is not the honest truth. Like we don't have to have a PhD to be able to work with open source. We don't have to have a degree to work with open source. We don't have any of that. We need to have like solid background and that's it. And solid background is out there on papers, books, blogs, whatever. So we should stop thinking like that. And we are, because we work with open source, we are not as smart than other people that doesn't work with open source and vice versa. Like, they are just different kind of technologies, and that's it. Okay. The, the first real cause that I want to talk to you guys is, like, I believe that people really quickly find their comfort zone. They don't have to learn more in order to get their paycheck every month. They don't have to sh learn a lot their language in order to get the same. They can spend day by day rebooting nodes, doing exactly the same, patching manually servers or application, deploying things that maybe I don't know what is happening in the background, it's just 
hit enter on this script and that's it. So that is one of the first cows that I, that, that I believe is really hard to like penetrate this market in LATAM because I, I believe this is like worldwide, but when we want to sell something that we know that is working on other companies and other countries, we are more in the position to say, you, why, do you have, why do you want to fix this? No, yeah, I want to fix it. Okay, then use this, then use this other. No, I don't, I don't need to do that. And it's like, okay, but you want to fix it, right? Yes. Why do you do this? Because I don't need to do it. And it's like that. And it's, 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 it's going nowhere, that kind of discussion. It's really weird. But we need to understand that people, like, even if in our minds we say, this will be, be better for you from a, like, engineering standpoint or from a, like, growing professional standpoint, it will be like, this should be easy, right? But uh, we don't need to forget that we are all humans and we want to get a time, like, relax a little, um, mostly after COVID. It's like, yeah, I don't want to learn. I don't want to, like, do something new. I just want to lay down and relax and sleep. But, um, yeah, that, that is the, like, uh, the first thing that we need to have in mind. And a really important one is like we need to understand that the language barrier is something real, something real. So again, getting back to the same topic, it's like in order for me to like teach you a new technology, you will have to understand English. And the person on the other side is like, yeah, but I'm still getting my paycheck. I don't have to learn English. I, I can continue doing the same and the same again, getting a paycheck every month. And can I can stay away from English. That will be fine. And a lot of companies in here, when they release documentation, when they release certifications, the main language that prevails in that is English. But if they want to penetrate other markets, shouldn't be they also releasing in other languages? Not only Spanish, I'm talking just the Spanish example because I'm from Latin America, but they should be do that. They should be start working on that because it's a, it's a way to close the gap with, this, with the communities. It's not just a matter of the, yeah, I don't care if, it's, if I sell or not this technology to this company in Latin. It's, it's a community thing. I'm not gonna buy anything that you want to sell if I not able to understand what you are saying or what you are selling to me. So this is a, the first one, a really important one. The second real cause is, and I believe this is the most important. Um, in LATAM, and I've been working for 20 years in Mexico, it's pretty much the same, is the lack of ownership and taking the risk on developing and retaining the talent in-house. Uh, it's really an expensive risk to take. Why? Because if I manage to get uh, an engineer like that they don't know about OpenStack, Ansible, Kubernetes, whatever, and I invest in him, hey, now you are going to focus on this certification, you are going to learn this, I'm going to provide you with lab environments, whatever, and after that the company needs to work on retaining him, like to they need to work on this kind of fight that any other companies out there, any other company out there is going to be maybe waiting for this moment to happen. Like maybe they approached the engineer one year ago and they said, okay, you only know Linux? Yeah, I start learning some more and I will get back in a year. And when their current owner, like uh, employee, employer, they, they teach you these kind of things, they invest in him then the other company comes around and said, okay, right now do you have learned anything in the last year? Yeah, okay, because the company didn't invest in him, they just get, they are in the position to offer a bigger paycheck because they didn't invest in him. So that is a real risk that people inside these companies are taking to develop uh, knowledge inside. And actually this is a, 
think that it can be like explaining, like increasing the reach on countries and even continents, not only inside Mexico, but there is something real that happened. So what can we learn from here is that it's really easy for a company in, the, in other countries, US, UK, to wait for that to happen, to wait for that development, on, for, to wait for these engineers to get the knowledge, and then they will come to, the, to them and offer him a better paycheck. And I mean, that is average. And they don't have to do much. Like, only by sponsoring a visa and paying him not even way much than a normal engineer, it's like, I'm gonna pay you like average. And just by doing that, I'm giving you more money. Because we are, when we try to relocate from one country to another, we, 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 don't, have, we don't have this kind of information on how hard will it be. Uh, when we have 20 years or something like that, it's like, oh, nice, I'm going to live in another country, I'm going to get more money and have fun. And that's it, but all the, like the backlog that, that you have and you are going to suffer, no one is going to explain you that. And the company that is going to hire you is never going to explain you that. And there is something, this is something that is happening really often and in Mexico, it happened a lot. They, they call this brain drain. That is that they are waiting for these people to know new things, to learn new things, and then they go back to the region and steal that knowledge and put it in another country. And right now, maybe the only dude that was like the impressive enough or smart enough to do Kubernetes, OpenStack, Ceph, and whatever, right now lives in another country and it's representing another country. So it's like a, a really thing that we should like take into account. Basically, because we need to close the gap. We need to close this gap between countries having different technologies and countries having, like not having different technologies, but we need to see this as a community, as a community, and when we are part of a community, it doesn't matter where you are, where you live, or what time zone are you at. So we need to close this gap, and I think that we need to have like really deep into our brains is we continue, if we continue drain, draining like our regions, there is no way that that is going to fix the issue. There is no way that that is going to end up on a good outcome. That is, that idea, I don't know who was the, the smart-ish people that saw that as a good idea. Yeah, let's draw in another region from good engineers, whatever. But that is not going to continue forever. So, I just want to give you guys these two like sentences that I consider that are really important and they are like really um, I believe there, there is, if someone asking me how to like create a gist or summarize all my slides on one, it will be with that one, with those two ideas. And I believe that is the explanation, the entire explanation of my talk. Um, with that, there is my information, my Twitter. I am part of the Latin American community for many projects out there. I'm community ambassador for CEF. Um, I organized with Elena last year the Open Infra Day in Mexico City. That was the first Open Infra event organized by the community 100%. We had a few like sponsorships, but the company wasn't born to any, com any, like they, they even was bound to any other companies around. It was 100% work for, from the community. And yeah, we try to get together in there. I try to link IRC channels because uh, it's not that I don't like IRC, but if a person says to me, hey, yeah, 
to be able to know more and talk to the community, I need to use IRC, I don't want to, it's like, okay, let me fix that for you. I'm gonna put it in there, I'm gonna to create a dashboard to auto invite you because I'm not gonna pay for Slack, that's the real. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that is a way to get in touch with the community, get in touch with me, and try to collaborate in this, in this effort to close this gap and to, for, I don't know, other kind of companies or other sites of companies that, that want to work with the Latin American market, like the communities out there, the engineers are out there, and we know that maybe sea level they take the, like the, the they made the, the contracts, but the engineers that they are the ones that suffer day by day by fixing issues, and they are the ones that understand more the, 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 the technology. So, thank you. I don't know if uh, you guys have any question that you want to give throughout me or anything. If not, Elena, I want to say a few words. Thank you, guys. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Alvaro. That was great. So as Alvaro mentioned, he organizes the community in Mexico. In addition to Alvaro, we have many community organizers here this week. Uh, as you saw them on the keynote stage, there a lot of them are in this room. We have Andy here, and Song Su, Enrico, and Hasuaga san, and a few more around. So I want you, if you want to get involved in your local community, you can find them and talk. And if there's any communities that you didn't see represented, come and find me, and I'm happy to hook you up with whoever is representing that community. Thank you.